I'm going to very quickly try to uh, to share the experience of uh, CTV and Mozambique on legal community legal assistance, um, and we are talking about um, assistance to rural and very remote uh, communities uh, in the country. And um, I thought I should sh start by sharing um, a little bit of background information on the Mozambican legal um, framework for land governance, which I think is well known, so I'll not spend a lot of time here. And the reason why I'm, I'm uh, starting here is because um, I think it's important to, to know that despite having a very good uh, legal and policy framework for land management, especially in what concerns protection of community land use rights and, and, and the promotion of community participation in decisions of a land, um, the practice shows a very, a very uh, worrying scenario in terms that, that there is a, a very big pressure of a rural lands. Uh, you might have heard or noticed that the Mozambique is usually listed as uh, uh, one of the top countries where land grabbing is happening, uh, large uh, scale land allocations are, are taking place with many, many problems being caused uh, in rural communities. Um, uh, so uh, um, understanding why we're having uh, these problems is important. And I, I, I mention the, the, the good legal framework. Uh, um, but I also, um, the challenges that uh, uh, we're having in implementing uh, the legislation, as you see in this slide, uh, you know, all the, all the mechanisms that are, we're put in place to ensure participatory governance are not adequately being um, used or implemented. Uh, one of the mo most important mechanisms, for example, is community consultations. Meaning, meaning that in all decisions of a land, communities should be consulted. And, and this is a particularly important uh, uh, provision because it really allows, if well implemented, of course, it really allows um, concerns, interests, and priorities of the rural poor to be taken into consideration. But uh, the practice is not uh, really um, uh, taking place um, as uh, we, we would desire. Um, consultations are not taking place properly. Um, there are other mechanisms such as community land delimitations that are also not taking place adequately. A very uh, low number of community delimitations, for example, uh, so far undertaken. Uh, uh, um, and the um, private uh, community uh, partnerships, which is also another mechanism established in the law, are not really uh, taking place. Many of the investments that are being approved and implemented do not really integrate communities' uh, uh, interests and ob objectives in par in, as part of the investments. And uh, due process is uh, uh, lack of, uh, you know, due process is another challenge. Uh, accountability of public um, officers is, is, is problematic, is not still uh, at the level that should be um, done, and the corporate, social, uh, legal, and environmental responsibility is still a struggle. You know, there is a, a tendency of uh, investors to just bypass procedural aspects and ally themselves with the, with the government to ensure that investments are taking place, even when the rights of the communities are being jeopardized. And, and other uh, aspects, uh, such as, for example, corruption, institutional weakness, etc. But one of the, um, the challenges that I think is worth mentioning is the fact that uh, even if everything else was uh, properly done, the reality is that we, the level of illiteracy in rural areas is such that uh, really makes things very difficult. You know, uh, because of that, uh, and uh, lack of information, lack of legal knowledge, uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, um, access to, to, or lack of knowledge on how to access uh, legal information, access legal uh, services, access uh, public institutions, is, is, is a problem for, for these 
uh, a good uh, legal and policy framework to be adequately implemented. So we, uh, CTV, um, uh, has uh, you know uh, recognized that uh, while it's important to work with the government and with the private sector to to try and and and, and uh, help uh, to improve go governance. Uh, processes uh, on their part, it's also very important to work with the communities themselves and to, to increase uh, the level of, uh, of their, their, their ability and capacity to participate in decision-making processes. Um, so, um, um, working with other, with other institutions, for example, such as the Center for Legal and, and the Judiciary Training, uh, we realized that there was a very important program that was being implemented, which was a program for training paralegals uh, coming from all all parts of the of the of the country and all from different sectors. And first, I think it's it's worth uh, recognizing uh, an effort that was undertaken by the government itself to provide information and training to local level uh, um, people. So this train paralegals training was actually done by the by the by the government, and in this process that lasted around uh, uh, eight eight years, uh, more than uh, seven hundred paralegals were were trained, uh, coming from the gov local government uh, um, institutions, coming from civil society organizations, including community based organizations, and also from uh, you know more urban. Uh, based uh, organization. So it was a large number of uh, paralegals that were that were trained. Um, uh, but uh, although it was positive that uh, we had this mass of, of people with uh, uh, legal knowledge, one of the some of challenges were encountered, uh, and one of, uh, of of these challenges was the fact that the, many of these paralegals, especially those coming from community areas. Uh, did not have uh, the institutional linkage very, very uh, clearly established. They would be sent to the training and then return back to their communities and not provide the services that were, they were expected to provide because there was not a clarity uh, um, uh, in the communities of origin of what, you know, how they should be used and uh, how to whom they should respond and how they should be integrated in the institution existing in the communities. So uh, we found that many, in many situations, paralegals would go back to their communities and they would just stay there and not, uh, you know, uh, undertaking their, their, their work. Uh, another aspect related to, to institutional uh, linkages was the fact that uh, um, by nature, paralegals um, are people that have, you know, a basic training on legal issues and uh, um, and because of this they necessarily need to be linked to more qualified uh, uh, staff or, or institutions that can help them complement their work by bringing in uh, uh, trained lawyers for example that can take issues to to to, to the government to to the courts or to the parliament for example so the linkage between uh, community paralegals and um, uh, advo uh, advocacy organizations, for example, such as CTV, was not uh, well established. Um, unfortunately, uh, the Center for Legal and Judiciary Training stopped its work in, uh, in 2010. So there was, uh, you know, uh, a threat that uh, this process was going to be stopped unless somebody or some institution uh, was ready to jump in and, and uh, continue with the work, which is what CTV decided to do. Uh, and uh, one of the first things that CTV did was to uh, update information on the paralegals that were still uh, uh, working, uh, knowing where they were, what they were doing, how they were uh, positioned in their, in their uh, communities or organizations. Um, and also uh, ensure that they would uh, continue to be trained and updated on the on the legal uh, uh, framework. Um, you know, uh, in the last in the last years, uh, many um, some new legal instruments were approved, which were not uh, uh, included in the in the training sessions that some men, some paralegals 
were involved in. So it was important not only to refresh their knowledge on, on uh, more uh, or older uh, legislation, but also on the new on the new instruments. For example, some of these uh, that I can mention are the guidelines on community consultations that were passed in 2012, as well as the regulation, for example, on, on community um, uh, resettlement in the context of, uh, of uh, land-based investments. Uh, so uh, aside from uh, uh, retraining paralegals, we also uh, assisted paralegals to organize themselves uh, in associations at the uh, community, provincial, and the, and the district levels. Uh, we we also, you know, joined the a process that were had already started with the Center for Legal and Judiciary Training to um, promote the recognition of the paralegals by 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 the government. And um, uh, adding to that, um, we thought it was also important to um, undertake what we call a, a land campaign, because uh, as I said, lack of legal knowledge on the rural side is a very um, uh, big concern. So, uh, you know, promoting uh, information campaigns that would take inform uh, information to the rural areas uh, using various means, including the, the, the media, was also part of, uh, of the, 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 the activities that we decided to, to implement. And in, in 2010, um, the, the National Consultation Forum on Land was uh, established, uh, and we, we made a point of uh, participating actively in, in this uh, platform especially to bring to the central level the concerns from from the the, the rural uh, side uh, so in terms summarizing the work that we've done so far some of the work that we've done uh, you see that uh, we have retrained uh, around seven 170 paralegals in 10 provinces and the country has 10 provinces which means that we've managed to work with the paralegals in the whole country uh, we supported the, 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 these paralegals in organizing uh, community sessions on legal issues uh, in, many, in many districts involving a lot of people. Uh, we supported the, 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 the creation and operation of uh, uh, provincial paralegal associations and two district associations. Maybe one of the most outstanding work that we did, um, uh, and this is related to uh, the, the topic of this webinar, which is uh, sustainability and scalability, is participating, directly participating in community consultations or at the community level in areas as remote as uh, the district of Palma in the northern part of the, of the, the country. Uh, where uh, the liquefied natural gas uh, project is being implemented, so taking a, a lawyer to support a taking a lawyer from Maputo to support a paralegal in Palma, which is three thousand miles away from Maputo, uh, has many many implications that I'll talk about a, a bit later. Uh, other activities that we uh, did was to contribute to, to uh, uh, regulatory processes, uh, uh, participating in the Community Land Forum, as I said, and organizing the first National Paralegals Conference in 2013, which had uh, as one of the main objectives to promote the recognition of paralegals. And it was a very uh, important meeting attended uh, by, by, by high-level government officers uh, and by paralegals from all over the country, which brought the issue of the need to provide legal assistance at the rural, at the, at the rural um, uh, side to the agenda of uh, the debates in the, in, the, in, the, in the country. Now, what are the challenges again? Um, you know, um, having paralegals, although the, the, the center's program was a, a government-led uh, uh, program, uh, it, it was not everybody in government that recognized the need for paralegals and recognized their work. So uh, we had before and we still have to do a lot of work to, to you know, promote 
the 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 usefulness and the importance of uh, paralegals uh, participation uh, especially at the go local government level so it this is a, an ongoing work uh, there is recognition at the central level but we, as we move down to the local level we still encounter problems uh, in terms of acceptance of paralegals work um, and I mentioned also that uh, uh, paralegals uh, do, in many cases do not have uh, their affiliation to, to, to the community is very clearly established so this is something that uh, we still con we continue to work on uh, we're making some progress I think that uh, uh, the paralegals that were retrained have now that component also clarified which makes a very big uh, difference the other challenge has to do with the with the, the, the profile of the paralegals and uh, uh, I mentioned the, uh, uh, the low level of illiteracy of literacy in the rural areas but uh, we have to recognize that it's not just a matter of knowing how to write and read it's also um, important to uh, assert the, the, the social recognition that a, a paralegal has in the community that he has integrated so he is um, um, allocated so we have to produce or design uh, training training programs that uh, um, allow people for example that are not literate to also participate and so designing uh, uh, training programs that uh, bring everybody uh, together and provide opportunities for everybody is, is, is uh, not easy the other challenge of, of course is financial resources how do you ensure that there are resources not only for the qualified advocates in Maputo to, to, to do their work in supporting paralegals but also for the uh, local level paralegals themselves to respond to the demand uh, for their services that comes from poor and very remote areas so the issue of uh, financial resources is uh, important for all levels of legal assistance uh, that we we have at the central level in Maputo at the provincial level at district level and at the community level so ensuring that there are enough resources to support uh, organizations in all these levels is very important there are other challenges for example which uh, in the fact that uh, you know some paralegals are trained uh, integrated in, in a, an NGO or, or coming from a community and suddenly they are taken away from other by other by other institutions and they stop working for the the, 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 the groups that they were expected to to provide assistance so well this is uh, something that we it's very difficult to to address and to 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 prevent I, you know there's mobility people move around um, so uh, the issue of sustainability also has to do with the fact that people change their minds people move around people have other other choices um, so what are the, the the opportunities that we see uh, I, I I'm going to use a different slide because I took some time to improve a little bit the information that I had on, in terms of uh, the topic of this of this webinar in terms of sustainability for example I mentioned uh, political legitimacy qualifications financial resources uh, trying to to prevent or reduce you know mobility and co-option by the private sector for example uh, in terms of scalability I think that it, it, it is at least in the case of Mozambique it's important to ensure that it's not only one organization that uh, tries to do an immense work like this in the country so it's important that we we we, we identify and bring in other organizations in the country that are highly qualified in terms of legal uh, knowledge so that uh, the burden is not put only on one institution so ex uh, uh, ensuring that the uh, uh, CTV and other organizations for example like the, the Human Rights League or, or the, the, the Women's Forum have also this capacity to, to train and to support and to monitor uh, paralegals and to provide legal assistance is, is very important um, starting using starting from the less complicated to, to, to the more sophisticated uh, 
scalability uh, uh, options. I think that, for example, expanding the, the land campaign using different media and other instruments would be uh, one of the priority. Uh, it's important to, to, to take information urgently. You know, the pressures on the rural side are taking place today, so we can't afford to wait until we, 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 we have a lot of money to, to, to send the lawyers to, to all over the country. So we can use other options, and I think that the land campaign provides a good opportunity to ensure that information reach the rural area with um, not so high financial uh, costs. Uh, it's also important to continue training paralegals. The, the 700 or so paralegals that were trained uh, are still a very reduced number in comparison to the amount of paralegals that we really need to, to uh, in the whole country. So it's important to continue these training ac activities. Um, promote uh, using other, other opportunities and, and partnerships, other interventions, for example, uh, you may know that uh, uh, we have a very um, important intervention which is related to the limitation of community lands. Uh, uh, so in the process of uh, delimitating community lands for, uh, for, to, to formalize their, their rights of a land that they occupy, uh, we find very good opportunities for legal assistance, very good opportunities for uh, uh, advocacy that can be used. So our idea is to use community land delimitation processes as processes for provision of legal uh, ad, uh, uh, advice and, and advocacy as well. Uh, there is a program called uh, Community Land Initiative um, that, uh, that it's conducting community land delimitations and we are uh, partners with uh, this program and our mandate is to ensure that the legal assistance is provided to communities that are being benefited by this, that this program. Um, other options is to, uh, as we move forward by uh, establishing community association, paralegal associations at the district and the community level especially, we think that support should be directed uh, to, this, uh, to this level. Uh, it's important to support CTV in Maputo, for example, but it, I think it's more important uh, even more important to support the community association of paralegals that exist in Palma or Matisse district or support the district paralegals association. We have to reduce the dependence uh, that uh, these associations have to, with regard to uh, Maputo-based organizations. Um, we also uh, need to uh, mobilize uh, resources um, to ensure that, uh, uh, as I said, qualified advocacy work is constantly uh, available for paralegals that exist in the country. Uh, it's a very complicated process. It's a very massive amount of work. It will take time to, to increase the level of legal knowledge in the rural areas, but we have to start from somewhere. And this is what we are doing and this is what we are promoting. And I think this is all from my side. Thank you.